it's Tuesday evening, of course. And of course, I'm back here. Andreas here from Asia Mind Dynamics with a session on coaching, continuous session on coaching. And what does it take to become a great coach? Not just a normal coach, but a great coach. And today, I've managed to get a very, very, very special guest. He's on a visit from Iran, a good friend of ours. We've met two years ago, right? Yes. Two years ago for a long period. Three years ago, a long period of time with us. And then he went off back to Iran and Canada. And he's here for just about a week or two. And I grabbed him. I grabbed him because I thought, like, hey, it's a great guy. And I want to get him on Facebook. And he agreed to be here. So that's Dr. Ali now. And Dr. Ali is a leadership expert, a leadership coach, leadership expert, management guru. <laughs> I'm going to exaggerate a little bit. I'm going to... <laughs> leadership management guru and let's hear about him for just a moment all right about you you can say something about yourself yes. now ali hi everyone it's very very good Woo, it's my face again. sorry i gotta go to the other side uh, uh, i feel like i'm again at home i uh, i love here i love malaysia i love asia mind dynamics and i'm so happy that i'm back today um and uh, i'm with uh, andreas here and with, uh, with all of you I'm very happy about it. Thank and you Justin, you are here. Yay! <laughs> Hi, Justin. Justin, you have met Ali. Ali is a fantastic guy. Justin just got started on his journey into the mine this year. And actually, Great. Justin, you are one of the reasons why we do a lot of that stuff. Because you asked so many questions in the beginning of this year. And then I said, like, I got to do this Facebook live feed because your questions are great enough to share with everybody. So hey, let's say hello also to Faris and Justin and Zukmar is here again. Shout out to you and air high five to you. I can't reach you right now. Would love to, to meet all of you guys sooner or later face to face. And Dr. Ali here on a visit from Iran, leadership expert. So I'm inviting you already. Please share this video, like as many possible, Press the like button as much as you can, of course. Don't switch off. <laughs> Stay with us. Do press like. Uh, press the like. And, yes, <laughs> and, and, and we like likes here, right? <laughs> Leaders like likes as well. You know, Leaders are always alone in the tower, ivory tower, <laughs> away, disconnected from the public and never get the likes. So give us a like already so we know that you are there and share this video across your timelines and are leaders really lonely that's uh, and you guys don't let uh, leave us lonely okay ask questions it's your session again ask as many questions as you can squeeze this guy he finishes phd so he's a doctor now knows F. talk about what what kind of phd have you done um, it's actually a DBA. Um, okay, let me uh, tell <laughs> so a little say bit about, about myself. you first. Okay, we forgot all about that. I'm so happy. Okay. <laughs> okay, I'm Ali. Uh, my formal name is Ali Reza Sharifi, but people call me Ali, and I'm, I'm convenient with that, and I like it. Um, I'm Thank from God Iran. For that, you know, they like your name. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm from Iran. Um, I did my degree in business management. And, and yeah, I came to Malaysia. Uh, I lived in Malaysia for almost 10 years. Um, I did an MBA in Cyberjaya Multimedia University MBA in marketing. And then I um, pursued my uh, education and studies in UK and in Bangi. I, UK and Bangi. Yeah, okay. in Bangi, <laughs> yes, in UK. Ah. Um, in management, majoring in management, minoring in marketing. And my main specialization is uh, leadership. Uh, leadership styles and my dissertation was about leadership in uh, dynamic uh, organizations and uh, just a year ago less than a year ago i published a book uh, in amazon then you can search my name and find it. <laughs> <laughs> talking about promotion here all right hey <laughs> you give him a like for publishing a book many of us think about writing a book and he's got that so send him a like over already or even better a heart that somebody finished the book but a question came in from asia mind dynamics 
The second one is <laughs> actually did... on the way. Huh? The, second the second book is one. on the way. Yes. About, about what would that be? That's also about leadership. It's a, it's more of a commercial book. Um, commercial and, book. And it's m more applicable to uh, managers of organizations who are actually working in a highly dynamic environments. They face different challenges. They need to... Uh, mot keep motivating their people, empowering their people um, to make changes to their organization and move forward, to gain competitive advantage and move forward. How did you get started in coaching, leadership coaching? Why did you choose leadership coaching? Well, um, I'm checking every now and then if there are questions from you I guys already. I fell in love with management <laughs> with the moment I registered in, in for my bachelor degree and um, I got into knowing this uh, concept of management. First of all, I got familiar with marketing, and then uh, I found out the areas of strategic management and uh, leadership. What I wanted to do for a long time was actually to do training. Uh, that's my passion because I thought with training I can make changes in people, uh, in people's lives. I can uh, help them, uh, and I can. Uh, I thought I can be good in uh, giving people what I know and transforming what I know to people. Um, when I came to Asia Mind Dynamics, I think that was the first time that I thought of thought about coaching people. Mm, it was okay. uh, almost three years, less than three years ago, and mm, I, I thought, well, since I want to do training, why not I mix it with coaching? And I do coaching from time to time. I did the first uh, level practitioner coaching and then master prac and then I kept practicing it. I was in uh, my country in Iran and I for the my one and a half last uh, probably 18 months or 19 mm. months and I have done uh, coaching there uh, and that's one of the areas that I like very much and I love to do that. What is what do you think? I mean, you have coached in the training at least or even outside. You coach people in Malaysia. Mm -hmm. You coach people in Iran. Mm -hmm. Good question, maybe from my side now. Always good questions. <laughs> you always <laughs> have. Good <laughs> What's the difference between their their issues and the issues people face here? Um, we all are, leaders of all. We leaders. are all human beings. There are uh, lots of things in common and problems that people have. Uh, a lot of problems actually are similar. Uh, I would say uh, a lot of it are Speak emotional emotional uh, issues that people have and um, they have desires to do something, to make some changes. Most of them have uh, some beliefs that limit them, like limiting beliefs um, and negative emotions, uh, I would say. So there are more of commonalities between people rather than the differences. But... Um, Based on my limited experience, based on what I've known in Malaysia, uh, what I've come across in Malaysia and in Iran, um, people think differently somehow in, in one these two countries. Um, it's uh, in what area? Well, or how specifically say, do they think differently? Um, people in Iran, I think their value levels are different. Um, when you come to master practitioner, you know about it. <laughs> it's, not, it's not about a promotion for our other no, no, no. I mean, practitioner. I mean, uh, there is so much to say um, if pe if uh, the participants actually and the audience are familiar with it. It's a good thing actually to discuss about. Um, I, I would say um, they are different value levels. They are, the challenges that people face in here and in Iran are different. Business-wise, I did not actually coach managers in Malaysia, but I have done in Iran, so I need to coach some managers here so that I can tell you the difference yeah. between <laughs> their problems and the Iranian uh, manager's problem. But anyway, um, I think if you know your stuff, if you know the basics, if you know the techniques of coaching, uh, specifically I'm talking about NLP coaching, if you know NLP and if you study, if you read, uh, you gain knowledge, then it's easy for you. The context is not actually a big, big thing for you because the whole thing about coaching is to build a rapport, understand about the person, the person's problem, and what they want to achieve. Get rid of those negative beliefs, negative emotions, and then you can. It's very easy. New, it sounds very easy, new right? <laughs>
it is easy if you if you know if NLP, you in love with of course, it. <laughs> you know that's easy, okay. But most people always say it's really hard to change behaviors, right? Um, are leaders harder to change, so to speak? Is it harder for them to to do to, to accept change, personal change? I, I do know from from my leadership experience, leaders are really great in strategic thinking and giving good advice and mentoring, but this expertise they have might also sometimes cause them to resist outside advice, right? Is it, is it, is it, is it harder for you to, to help leaders change? Um, well, when it comes to change, the first thing that leaders need to have uh, is actually have to have the desire to change. Uh, if they want they can change. Changing is not difficult. It the might decision, be challenging. Right? The decision to seriously make it make a change. Some of them, I mean, majority of these managers have been into the business for a long time, and they get promotion. They get promotion. They they put so much of effort at work um, to to promote themselves to mm. to become a manager, to become a CEO. Um, some of them think that that's the end, so they already reached their uh, potential and then now they have no room to develop themselves or their skills um, but that's actually not the true myth for that. Yeah, exactly it is um, successful ones are the ones that are always open to learning and they keep learning new things and they get stronger and as they get stronger as they get better more effective and efficient they will be able to move their organization they move their people higher right yes you are planning to that's very interesting give him a like in a moment if you want he's planning to actually go to canada and starting to work thanks for the like and starting to work there as a management consultant as a coach in canada which i think is very very great because he would have the malaysian or Asian experience he's got the experience from iran and he brings it over into canada isn't it, yes. isn't, it, isn't it daunting for you to start something new over there? It's, it's beautiful. To me, it's very nice. Um, the first time I came to Malaysia, um, it was difficult for me to adapt myself to this new environment. What made but, it difficult? But uh, what made, yeah, what was, made it what, difficult? What was it difficult? <laughs> difficult, the different language, different oh. culture, different people. But I found that when I... When I, after some time, I figured out that there are a lot that I have learned along the way. As I was here, as I came across people, I met them, um, I got to know them, and it made me uh, a different person, a better person, a stronger person. Right. Uh, I have been working in Malaysia for also for many years. For six years, I was uh, in education. I was in right, UT, right, right. Uh, in Nilai. I, I teach. I used to teach there. I had lots of students and that was a very great opportunity for me to get to know Malaysians, get to know not just Malaysians, but also other international people there. Um, Let me interrupt you, if I may. A shout out to Justin, of course, he's asking a question, hooray! So I interrupted you because I think answering questions is more important than Absolutely. just talking about us, yes, because the session good. is about you. Yes. So Justin asked two questions, actually, two questions! Ah. First of all, what are the skills, what, what skills are required to be a good leader? Or oh, not just a good leader, actually a great leader, right, maybe? And the second question is, how do you coach a person to develop leadership skills? All right, good questions. Thank you for asking these great questions. Well, um, first of all, we should know what leadership is. There are so many different definitions of leadership oh. in different contexts, um, but... Um, what is common among most of them is actually the ability to influence other people. Not by force, but by willingness. People, but, force, but force is still existing, right? It's still it's, authoritarian uh, leadership skills, right? There are some, uh, some uh, scholars and some experts that they, they say, no, leadership is not actually about that. Because mm. if I hold a gun on someone and I said, do this and do that, am I a leader? I'm influencing and they're doing it. But... It's not by for their willingness to do. But for how long will they do, right? Um, <laughs> so so there, is, there wouldn't be a force. Uh, there, it's more of uh, them wanting to follow. Exactly. And 
creating the desire for them so that they want to follow. If it makes sense, they will do that. If you make a good connection to them uh, and they really see you as a person that they want to uh, be ha make happy, then they will come to you, they will follow you, they will do whatever is necessary and they will be happy to do that. So, so that's the highest thing about so leadership. It's about influence. It's you've all mentioned. about influence. It's always influence in any it's situation, hey, right? Absolutely. That's number one. But I think you mentioned also something um, to build rapport. That's if, right. If I that's hold right. a gun against somebody's head, it would not necessarily be no. a, a building rapport. It would be kind of a... Yeah, I would follow you for a while, but the true. moment I get you're looking away, I'm running as fast That's as I true. can, right? That's and there true. are stories even in NLP with, with this kind of stories happening. I can, will you change if I hold a gun against your head? Yeah, I change, but, but, but the moment change you're gone, I'm, 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 I'm disappearing from my change Absolutely. initiative, right? The Absolutely. desire, you mentioned desire as well, Absolutely. right? Absolutely, yes, the desire. So, uh, to be a leader, uh, the first thing is actually to develop the mind. Uh, and then the heart. There are these two things to me are very important. And as I have read a lot of books about leadership, I found that uh, there are some technical skills that any leader needs to know in, with regards to the type of business that they are having and the type of people that they are dealing with. But one thing is actually the technical knowledge, and the other thing is actually and the mentality, and the other thing is actually the heart to develop it in a way that you can connect with people's heart. Hmm. Real leaders and true leaders connect to people's heart. They are authentic. They don't just talk. They have visions. They create their visions. They see things differently. They connect to people, communicate the vision, and bring this energy in them and motivation in people to do something. Let me, let me ask you a question as well. I had a recent discussion with... Mm -hmm with one person, can a leader be, must a leader be extrovert or can a leader also be introvert? Well, well extrovert means a bit louder, outspoken, right? Introvert would be more the quiet person listening. Maybe. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Well, uh, research on, on that matter, and I don't think there is a significant uh, difference between introverts or extroverts. Basically, being too much introvert or too extrovert is not, is not really good. Hmm. So, if you are in the middle, I would say it will work and it will be good. The important thing is actually to connect to people. The important thing is, uh, of course, if someone is introvert and is not connecting to anyone, how can other people find out what he or she wants to True. do and to follow? So, basically, it is about uh, influencing people and it requires the communication. So, being more of an extrovert probably will help us um, to get to... Uh, get people for more and connect to people further and get their heart, conquer their heart. Probably. Conquer their heart. Yes. Oh, oh. <laughs> That's just but, but I think it doesn't matter actually. You mentioned that if you're an introvert or extrovert, right? Mm -hmm. You must have a liking for people, I think. You must like people That's and right. not just tasks along that line. Or you must be, if you don't like people so much, you must be able to, to find people who are able to work with you and these other people might be able then to deal with the people that report that's to you right, that's somewhere right. along that line. Yes. Um, Justin was still asking the question, how do you coach a person to develop leadership skills? Um, coaching your first person, step to do? Well, um, to coach leadership, we need to understand what we want to coach specifically. Because leadership is a very broad concept and um, it can include a lot of, a lot of things. Um, basically, those people who come for coaching, those managers who come for coaching, they want to have some more skills. Some of them uh, ask for some specific skills like, uh, I want to develop my presentation skills. I can talk to my people, but when, in, when I'm in front of a large crowd, I panic and I can't do it. So that's a specific skill which is very helpful and very important for leaders to develop their leadership skills to become a better person. Mm. So it's all about getting better and better and better. It's not, uh, we can't have one package that if you go for this few days of coaching or few days of training, then you are a perfect leader. No, the leadership is actually being developed day by day. It doesn't happen in one day and it's definitely day by day. Every time we add something to our resources to, to become better leader. Yes. Has, has 
time. Hey, hey guys, thanks Cheng Wai, you're also here. Great to see that. So far, only Justin asked a question or two questions, and Natural has asked a question. <laughs> Would it be okay for you to first of all share this video across your timelines? So just press this share button for a little while. I'll ask people to, to link into this live feed. Comment below and, and, and ask more questions. Comment if what you like here right now is something of interest to you. I think Ali already de delivers quite good value. So it would be great if you support him. And most importantly, of course, ask questions, questions, questions. Because, hey, when do you have a chance to talk to a doctor about leadership, right? <laughs> I have to push it out sometimes, okay? Um, do you think it's harder to become a leader nowadays? Because time is changing, times are changing, all the world is changing so rapidly. It's not harder than before, but I think it is just different. It is different. Um, leadership is... Uh, the perception of people about leadership has changed uh, since probably uh, years ago. Uh, before leadership uh, was about uh, being alpha, being so tight and so tough uh, about things to make people follow you to in uh, to influence other people. But it's actually changed after World War II. The perception of people about leadership was changed, and they talked about the soft aspects of it: um, to take care of people, to mm. to be parenting your people, to be. Um, uh, to be with them, not just to ask them to do something for you, but to be with them and uh, to enjoy the whole journey together. So that, that's unitedness was something that was missing before that. Then, then came new concepts of leadership, the transformational leadership, the charismatic leadership. And charisma was one of the things that was there for, for many years. And people were talking about charisma um, to do something different about leadership. Um, Leadership is just different from before and what you need to do is you can study, you can read about it and you need to practice it. But the first thing I would say is be sincere to whoever you are communicating with. That's number one. That's the most important factor in leadership. Authenticity is the most important thing that people will follow. If they find someone not authentic, even if the, the person is the most knowledgeable person on, the, on that society, people mm. are not going to follow because they don't like it. So it actually sincere. leads directly to, to the NLP presupposition, respect the other person's model of the world, right? That's right. Somewhere yes. along that line. Mm -hmm. um, yes. Let me see if there's a question. Oh, Justin, thank you so much. I love it. How do you measure a client's leadership skills? Influence, for example, if it's improved after the coaching? It's a favorite question. And is it possible to measure leadership skills? So how do you measure progress? All right. Um, it's a good question. It's a wonderful uh, well, question. There is no one unique way of measuring it and quantifying it. But uh, what I found out and what I learned, uh, I wrote also in my book uh, about it, is... A good leader is able to, to do three things, to take care of three things at work. One is the task. The task should be done. Okay. Things should be there and the leader should get the outcome and the results. Who's doing Second, the task? It doesn't matter. Okay. I mean, not just the leader himself yeah. or herself, but the people. Mm. The, it, we're, we're talking about the group, but, okay. but the okay. leader is playing actually a critical role in okay. that. Okay. So one is the task. All right. The second one is relationship, to take care of people, to make more people motivated, to make them happy, mm. and so on. And the third one is change, all right? to make changes. In today's business world, it's impossible to have a routine kind of work for years and years and years. The environment changes rapidly, instantly, and organizations, every company, every business needs to adjust and adapt himself itself to mm. that business environment. So the leader, an effective leader, is the one who not only takes care of the tasks to accomplish them, but also to develop relationship with people and to make the change, continuous mm. change, effectively and efficiently. So that's what it is about leadership. What, what yes. I, if I may add on, so 
how I measure, it's a good question, Justin, because people always Very say, how do you measure the outcome? It's the same when I train people and yes. companies come to me. How do you measure if, if your training was successful? Mm -hmm. And in training is actually much, I think it's much weaker still to measure it because training a group of 20 people or 30 people or just 15 people and then having them to change everything is mm -hmm. pretty hard. Sometimes yes. to measure that because the external environment is influencing an organization dramatically well. Mm -hmm. Now, an individual is easier to measure and it's the easier one is when you, for example, I think it's my opinion, mm -hmm. um, do an interview with people, co-workers, for example, or up, up line, down line, side lines, or co-workers, the boss maybe, um, the 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 anybody in an organization, four or five people that are not necessarily the friendly people, the best friends of that person, doesn't need to be the highest enemy level as well, of course. Yes. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> but then ultimately, in the end of the coaching, going back to these people, maybe even after a period of time, mm -hmm. and say, "Hey, has something changed?" Yes, that's right. Um, that's a very good point. I, I want to add something to it. Um, there are some tests that you can, uh, and questionnaires that you can give to leaders to, to fill up. But people, uh, including leaders, when they respond, when they fill up the questionnaire, uh, they tend to intensify their capabilities, their strength points. So it would not be that valid uh, and reliable, uh, the results of questionnaires. So the best thing actually, the best source of gaining information about the person's ability to lead is to ask people, to ask the followers, to ask people who are working for that person. And that's the best source. And as Andrea said, asking the co-workers, the colleagues, um, followers, uh, or subordinates, and all even the managers of those leaders mm. uh, can help very much with that, what we call in business 360 degrees. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Feedback, yeah, yeah, yeah. Getting feedback from different sources and that shows the quality of a leader in a, in a much better way. Hey, today I'm talking to Ali. Ali is coming from Iran. Shall I tell you a secret, guys? You want to hear a secret? If you want to hear the secret, please press, say yes, okay? Say it's yes hard. if you want to hear the secret. Otherwise, I don't tell you the secret, okay? And it should not be Natra saying it, all right? And there are two people, there are three people on the, co on the session here right now. Sadly, some people left off already. Hopefully, they're coming back. And maybe you can also invite other people into that session here right now or give us a like or so that we... That we do know that you are there and that we get the feedback. Now, Sukma was talking about authenticity. It's a word in everybody's mouth. And you mentioned it many, many times as well. What the heck is authenticity? <laughs> it's all about being Trust it as yes. Okay, I want to have more yeses. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. It's all about uh, being sincere. It's um, what the leader intends to do what the leader says and what the leader does, this tree should match. The moment this match, there is authenticity there. Say that again. People, what the, the intention of the leader, hmm. the talk, the promises and the talk, and the behavior ah. are, should be aligned. To walk, to talk. Exactly. Plus so the intention. The, exactly. Nice, so nice. have the positive intention and then walk the talk. That's, that's the meaning of it. Okay, Justin said, yes, we're going to share with you in the end of that session the secret about Ali, okay? Maybe just tell Justin. <laughs> I just tell Justin on a very personal level via a message overall, okay? Um, what, when you, when you, you mentioned also you the training, okay? What, what, what is inspiring more to you? Is it more training or you like more coaching? What, which one is easier? It doesn't better? matter. I love, I love all of them. I, f I have found that, uh, I mean, based on my experience, coaching requires more energy. Uh, oh, it it does, requires yeah. so much of concentration, so much of energy. Um, but if you love it, if you have the passion, just do it. Mm. it. It's rewarding. It is very rewarding because at the end of the session, or at the end of your sessions, you will find that those people actually have made some changes in their lives. You see it directly, right? Exactly. As inspired. Exactly. Justin, exactly. that's for you right now because you always ask me about this one. The training, if I may say so, the training is about training 10 people, 15 people, 20 people. It's not, it's tiring. Of course, it's, it's all the pain because you've got to be very much alert and watching people and making the changes. But it's more about 
a bit of explanation and then, hey, go out and do the exercise. And when they do the exercise, I can walk around, my mind might be somewhere else sometimes even, you know, which it doesn't, but it can move on to something else, okay? That's While right. coaching, if I coach a person and suddenly my mind moves to somewhere else, the coach might run away and I don't see even the coach running away or falls from the chair and I don't see it. Wow, that's a big rapport. So it's, 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 it's much more... Coaching is much more intense, right? Yes. It's much more linking of minds and togetherness and working towards common outcome. Yes. Now, while I open the door, is, is a, the coach you must walk through. But sometimes, secretly, we go behind the coach and we have to kick them through the door. <laughs> not, necessarily, not necessarily in real time. <laughs> but but it's, about, it's about pulling them through and really forcing them through. And it can't, you can't be the authoritarian coach saying, you got to do it, which sometimes is possible, mm -hmm. of course, because some coaches want to be treated more on yes. an authoritarian style, mm -hmm. but more on a subtle manner to get the buy-in in a very subtle, hey, you've no big language pattern style to yes. embed the changes into their For mind. For NLP Master Practitioners, if you are coaching a value three-level people, you need to be authoritarian. Oh, yeah. You need to be tough to them. The mafia you need view. to give them <laughs> discipline. You need to punish them if they don't Follow what you do and what you tell them to do, the tasking and everything, and that's that's there. But to me, uh, coaching, training, uh, are like lo like one thing, and I love them very much. Um, it's uh, uh, for coaching. I feel the responsibility very much at the beginning of the session, and when the session is actually over, I I feel I'm relieved after that. Um, but I am happy at the end of it. Because I have done something for someone hmm, for some, that, yeah. that, makes, uh, that has made some changes. Um, even for trainings, there are days that I train from morning, from 8 o'clock or 9 o'clock. I start and I finish it at 7 o'clock. But, yeah, right? <laughs> but seriously, at, at the end of the training, I am more energized than, in the, than I am in the morning. Because I get so in much so positive in the training. Oh, in the, in yeah. the morning... In, I mean, at the end of it, I am physically very tired mm. at the end of the training day. Mm. But this satisfaction, the, the good feeling of satisfaction and being able to transfer what I know to people mm. and, and helping them to see things from another perspective yeah. actually is something moment. great. No, yes, absolutely. Exactly. Absolutely. exactly. That's actually something really uh, rewarding for me. So to me, coaching and training are both beautiful, beautiful, absolutely. and I love them. I Absolutely. love it very much. And I, I think, uh, that's just coming from me again, two things, first of all. Um, I like NLP coaching, and hopefully you like NLP coaching, because it's so fast. Yes. It's always amazing how, how people, when people realize it's so much faster, they're holding all their problems so long, and they're saying, like, I'm giving them a couple of hours or, or a few hours only, and everything changes for them, you yes. know? And, and they can't believe it. And honestly speaking, I mean, it's just me coming from NRP coaching. Sometimes when I, I, I don't, I don't want to hold on. I don't want to give them the chance to make the changes slow. Mm -hmm. I don't want to do that because in some, some people believe coaching needs three months, six months, 12 months time to change one behavior. I heard it many it's times and I was always falling from the chest then, you know, he was like, uh, for one behavior, and if you know NLP, you know how fast it actually can go. It doesn't mean that you that the coach comes in and boom, it's down, and you change everything immediately. You've got to understand their problem, of course, you know. That's right. So, I, I think NLP coaching is so much more effective overall. It so, is. how long do you want to stay with your clients? Uh, well, um, to work on the problem, we, uh, I always want to, them to get results as soon as possible. I mean, after the coaching is over, after they have their problem solved, we can have the, the good relationship, the professional and good relationship. Why not? Hmm. It's good. But uh, NLP enables coaches to use the techniques in an effective way and uh, to help clients get rid of their problems and get their outcomes as soon as possible. And I it's just realized I, should, I shouldn't do this. It looks really weird. <laughs> just... <laughs>
<laughs> so a leader shouldn't stand like that, isn't it? Okay. But since as trainers, as coaches with NLP, clean up minds, we are okay like that. But I just saw myself on the other screen here, uh, which is a bit lagging behind my laptop. So you're a little bit lagging behind. It looks weird, doesn't it? Okay. Give me yes if you say it's, if you think it looks weird when I do like that. Okay. Like stroking my head. I'm missing my cat at home already. Okay. <laughs> Hey, if you have, I would be nice to have more questions. Um, what are the three things if an executive starts up in an organization? Um, well, let's start, let's start coaching, okay? What? <laughs> Look at how many likes we got of this one, okay? Um, if if somebody wants to get started in leadership coaching, but for example, says. I never quite trained or was a leader in my former life. How can I become a leadership coach? Because I think it's important. Mm -hmm. Can they become a leadership coach? You mean uh, so somebody, coach, somebody, so. somebody is training, for example, NLP or any other tool in coaching overall, and realize, whoa, I like coaching. I want to become a, a leadership coach. Right. But I've never been a leader in my own organization, in my employee career. Mm -hmm. Can they become a leader? Well, uh, what is important is actually to understand that leaders, managers are also human beings. They, they really? have limitations. <laughs> they, they have limiting beliefs. They have uh, some negative emotions that hold them back. Mm. And they want outcomes. Like everyone else, they, they are also the same. And they come to you and they say, I have this, I know how to do this, but I can't do it. I, I need to be more of this or more of that. So what, whatever they say, um, it's, it's actually the skills that you're, you're helping them to do. And the NLP techniques actually help a lot. Mm. And I have used uh, massively, uh, massively the, the NLP techniques to to help the leaders, to help managers become better. And uh, if it's a soft skill, you, you go and learn about it and then you can uh, help them. I think, yeah, I think that's how it is. It's not you know how many, how many days Ali actually was? He's, he's a crazy guy. I love this guy as a friend. He was 14, nine days, right? 59 Fif days. 59. Oh, yes. 59 or 49? 49 or 59. I'm not sure. I think it's 49 days and you want to have one more to 50. Okay. You yeah, go to 50 okay. days. So today is the 50th day, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> I had lots 50, of 50 days, days in training with us. Days, huh? I have lots of the 50th days. Or oh, lots I of 50th days day because he is lot. visiting us quite a lot, <laughs> isn't it? Of course, as well. And we always, right. we always, when he comes, we have got the pizza and we've got a good Tetaric or so. Hey, Bessard, if you watch that video at a later stage, Ali's Tetaric was really, really fantastic really right now. It <laughs> tasted wonderful. Very so, good. since there are no more questions, um, what would be Three things for somebody that you would advise them to do to get started. What okay. shall they do? Um, well, uh, let me tell you something. Uh, this is one of the story things time. that uh, <laughs> it's, it's not a story, but it's something that I learned uh, at the time where I was studying my MBA. Uh, we there was uh, we had a professor uh, who was actually uh, edu well educated, and he was. Uh, uh, in Harvard Business School and one of the things that I learned from him was the mindset of the leader the mindset of us when we are communicating to other people not just a leader let's go forget about leadership for a moment and let's talk about everyone there is a theory called the theory of self-fulfilling prophecy and probably oh, wow. most okay. of you have heard about it it's oh. one of the strongest things uh, one of the strongest models and theories that I've heard and I've come across in all my management and leadership classes I share this with students with the audience and it says if you have assumptions about other people and you base your behavior about other people on the basis of those assumptions whether right or wrong people will be persuaded to behave in ways that your assumptions come true that's a very strong statement. Great leaders are the ones that believe in their people's potential. They believe in their employees' abilities, employees' knowledge, employees' potential. And because of that, they behave in ways that their assumptions come true. And people will do that. People will improve 
they, because they want to improve uh, themselves and they, they want to prove themselves to their leaders that mm. they can do it and the leader is actually right about them. True. So always have that mindset. And as John C. Maxwell, the famous leadership author says, put a 10 on every person's head. Quiet. And because don't you take put, a marker pen them, tomorrow morning and draw a ten on everybody's give them ten out of ten, and you unconsciously or subconsciously will be doing something that make your assumptions come true. They will behave in ways that they become ten, even if they are not actually ten. So it doesn't matter what their people really are. As a leader, as a manager, you have that belief in yourself, in your head, that my people are the best. Believe in them, help them, coach them, mentor them train them, give them instructions, give them, tell them about your vision and assist them in any case, solve their problems and then you will see you will get great results. I think that's the most important thing to me and I wanted to share with you and thanks for asking the question. We have got one more question. Justine, of course, now. You want to answer the question or not? Yes, sure. Depends what question <laughs> <laughs> You mentioned earlier, you mentioned the three ways to measure just now was task. Yes. Relationship and fast adoption to changes, and change, right? Yes. So he asked, you really sure you want to answer the question? Yep. <laughs> what qualities or values need a fast adoptive leader so the leader can become a change agent? That's a complicated question. <laughs> <laughs> so what are the values a leader needs to have to become, to become a, a change agent? Well, well first of all, the, the, they should not they should uh, not have limiting beliefs of oh, that's too difficult or we can't do it and we can't it's so complicated like that. They should have the vision that they can make the change. Hmm. And um, the values might differ might differ from a person to another, but um, they should welcome challenge. The challenge should be important for them, like hmm. taking risk. Right, right, get, right. Getting out of the comfort zone. And since they are leaders, they are responsible for other people as well. They are responsible for the whole organization. So there is so much of responsibility on their shoulders. Hmm. Um, I think um, they need to welcome the challenge. They should be positive about it. They should have hope. And they should want success so much that they are willing to take risk to do it. I, I think, Justin, you mentioned actually, you know, in, in, your, in your question, you mentioned that uh, change, what, what are the values a leader needs to have to, to appreciate or to drive change. The, well, it's the appreciation of change, mm -hmm. I think, the leader needs to have. A leader needs to have, what you mentioned, trust. But because a leader needs to move and work outside of the comfort zone, so they need to have the trust in their own abilities. I would say even more than the, the values, the beliefs are more important. Okay. They believe that I can do it and we can do it. But what is the value you, driving that belief? I mean, uh, they <laughs> probably you're right, success, you're right, yeah. success yeah, is there. Right, success yeah. can yeah. be challenge. Challenge is one strong value that they welcome the challenge. Mm. They, even they are okay with uncertainty because they want success. They want the bright side. Yeah, I think and, so, yeah. And the belief is, is more important because if they believe that they can do it and when they put their effort together as mm. a whole team, they can achieve it, definitely they will get better absolutely, results. Absolutely, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And I believe as well, flexibility. Flexibility, of course. In, in, in not in all areas. You don't want to have a leader who is changing from one moment to the next overall, yes. okay? Mm -hmm. uh, but a flexibility in order to find new ways if something gets stuck, I think is important. Right. Uh, respect, you mentioned earlier, mm -hmm. Justin, I think respect mm -hmm. is very important. Hey, Justin, open your NLP practitioner manual. Look at the NLP preset positions. You'll find lots of beliefs a leader needs to have, okay? There's no failure, only feedback. That's so that's right. a belief that a leader Still, needs to it's have. A belief, overall. It's a very strong belief. Absolutely. Uh, there's no failure, but feedback. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And also, also, of course, that they have the resources within themselves. Mm -hmm. That needs to exactly. be there, I think. Exactly. And hey, and the outcome of the communication is the response you get, right? So the outcome right. of the of the action you take is the results you get. That's right. Mm -hmm. So all of very those would be, I think, very, very powerful beliefs that every leader needs to have deeply within themselves. That's right. But I think the strongest one is appreciating people and their contribution as well. Yes, that's true. That's true. Thank you for agreeing with me. <laughs> <laughs> you are right. Uh, uh, no, 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 Justin, you can ask.
Ask as many questions as you want, you no, know. We are so happy to see Because he's apologizing now. A leader can apologize. It's also a good skill to have. <laughs> hey, a leader needs to be able to, to say sorry, right? Isn't it? Oh, that's actually a strong, a strong character. Required a strong character. Many leaders actually feel insecure and they don't apologize for their right. mistakes. They need to be the right. Good leaders, the good leaders <laughs> actually are the ones that if they find that they have made mistakes, they tell their people and they apologize for that. I think that's a very, very important thing for a leader to do. Right, 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 those right, right, right. Those leaders who feel se to, to have se security hmm. are okay with saying, I'm sorry, with apologizing. Right. And those leaders who are not and they are insecure, they won't apologize, but they never become great leaders. Right, they are exactly. managers, but they are not leaders. <laughs> That's yeah, the leaders need to lead, right? Exactly. Leaders have the vision yeah. in the mind. Hey, Sukma, you are back. That's great, okay? Uh, fantastic. Good to we, have you we, back. Sukma, you always ask about, earlier on, you ask always about, can a leader be, and I think in that is, can you still hear us? I hope you can still hear us, okay? What would be your advice to women who are leaders? So, oh, that's all the fantastic questions. Look, my fantastic. Advice to women? Women are just like men. I mean, uh, it's a Don't limiting tell belief. Don't tell no. <laughs> It's a limiting belief to say men have more potential in doing things. I, I want to share something with you. If you look at, uh, you ask people who adopt very old uh, beliefs about leadership, it used to be like, um, leaders are, should be men because they are powerful, because they take the risk and they are hard and that's what it takes to be a leader. But nowadays we don't think that way. One of the most important things, as, as just at the beginning of the interview I just said, is um, leadership is about influence, influencing people. And many women actually are much better in connecting to people's hearts. Because they understand people, more they, empathy, have, maybe, they, show, yeah. they show more empathy, they yeah. do care about people. And that's actually a very, very strong driving force for them. What they need, the women need to have, is to believe in, their, their selves, in themselves, right. in their abilities that they can lead. And if there is uncertainty, yes, it's, there is always uncertainty, but it doesn't matter because you are strong. So the more you're, you're feeling strong, the more you project it outside, and the more people see will come to you. I actually believe, Sukma, honestly speaking, if there would be more women leader, and not women who want to be like men, okay, and treat and behave like men. There are some leaders earlier who behaved like men, tried to be to step into the shoes of a man and saying only a man can be a leader. So a woman as a woman being a leader, I think the world would be even in a better shape nowadays. Exactly. Less wars maybe, less destruction, less more empathy, more taking care of people overall. Exactly. That's just my belief right now. Yes. So women for leadership, right? <laughs> Do you agree with me? Then, yes, give me the likes up, okay? Women as leaders would be better leaders for the world, okay? That's right. Shall we slowly come to an end? Or if you, if you have got any other question, it would be great if you ask more questions, of course. And Adi, I saw you. Thank you so very much for, the, for, for, your, for being here as well, of course. The secret about Ali. And I want to see lots and lots of hearts in a moment. Okay, hold on. Thank you, Dr. Thank you, Sukma. Do you know Sukma? No. It sounds like you know him, you know. It feels so good, okay? So connected, okay? Right. The you, secret God. of Ali is show it, show it, show it. What, what to show? What to show? <laughs> show! Show! Oh, oh he, got, he got married only... When did you get married? Just uh, less than two weeks ago. Less than two weeks weeks ago his darling wife is coming to Malaysia tomorrow. Hey! <laughs> and we gotta meet her. Maybe interview her <laughs> about them, leading. You surprised me by saying that. <laughs> leading leadership in a marriage. How would that be? Being the leader in a marriage. Hooray! Well I think I, up to two weeks ago I I was the leader, but now I'm a follower. <laughs> <laughs> You learn that after two weeks of marriage, but we don't want to go into this way right now, okay? That might be a topic for next week's session. 
Boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, that's it for tonight. Share this video on your timeline. Next week, we'll talk to a female, a woman, once again, and about leadership coaching, maybe from a female perspective. How would that be? So this week, we had a male leadership coach. Next week, we talk to a female leadership coach. And then let's see if we can play both videos side by side and let's see how it goes. Thank you very much. And you know you can create your life Thank if you, you so set much. your mind to it. Thank you so much for your lovely comments. I really appreciate it. I'm so happy to see your comments here. And, and your hearts. And the hearts. And your hearts and likes. All right, guys. Bye-bye. Goodbye.